So let's go straight in with the very simple thing. What is hypothyroidism and what is the normal signalment that you see the disease and kind of give us a bit of a background setting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hypothyroidism is an endocrine disorder. The, the thyroid gland is an important gland at the level of the neck that is producing the thyroid hormones. The, the scientific name is um, total T4, total T3, and, uh, and uh, there are some uh, free forms or total of T4 and T3. And uh, the thyroid hormones are extremely important for a lot of uh, physiological activity in the body. And with hypothyroidism, the thyroid stop working properly. So it means that uh, it's unable to produce enough thyroid hormones. And this happened for two reasons. The most uh, known one is uh, an immune-mediated process. We know that the immune system can uh, uh, work not properly sometimes, it can destroy a gland. And this is exactly what happened with hypothyroidism. The uh, immune system destroys the thyroid gland. And then there is another form that is called idiopathic. We, we use the word idiopathic when we have no clue why a disease happened. And so we see that the thyroid stopped working and it's called idiopathic uh, hypothyroidism. These are the two most common form in an adult dog. Then we have also a congenital form, in, in but uh, this is another, an, another to totally another topic. And so the thyroid gland stop working and we have uh, several clinical signs. We will talk uh, later on about the clinical signs, but um, since this is mainly an immune mediated disorder, the classical signalment of a dog with this condition is a middle-aged dog. We have to know that most of the immune mediated disorder are affecting the middle-aged dog. Potentially, we can see immunomediated disorder, we can see hypothyroidism at every age in a dog that is one year or in a 15 years old dog. But typically, the dog with hypothyroidism is a four, five, six, seven year uh, old dog. There is not a clear female or male predisposition, but uh, there is uh, quite a strong breed predisposition. Potentially, we can see hypothyroidism in every breed. But some breeds are more affected. For example, English Setter, Labrador Retriever, Golden Retriever, Rhodesian Ridgeback, Cocker Spaniel, Boxer, Beagle. The list is quite long, but these are the most commonly affected breeds. So we can see in every animal, but the, of course, in these breeds, it's a bit more common. So the classical animal with this condition is a middle-aged dog, male or female, potentially of every breed, but some breeds are more represented. And for sure, there is a genetic component. We don't know exactly which is the genetic reason, exact, the genet exactly the genetic reason, but of course, when it, there is a strong breed predisposition, there is for sure a genetic component. Okay, okay. So that's given us quite a good background. It's, it's pretty common, isn't it? Huh, it's all. It's difficult to answer this question because, uh, you know, when we talk about common, uncommon, mm. it depends on what we 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 think it's common. What is common? Um, if we, I, I tell you the prevalence, the scientific prevalence is between zero point two and zero point eight percent. So it means that when a vet is seen. Uh, uh, 100 dogs with several diseases, 0 0.2, 0 0.8 dogs, so less than one uh, has uh, this condition. So it is considered a common condi endocrine disorder. When we compare all the endocrine disorder, uh, it's considered a common one. But it's always difficult to say common or uncommon. Uh, I don't know. If you compare to osteoarthritis or you compare to chronic kidney disease, uh, or diseases like this, it's not a common disease. But uh, uh, when you look at the, uh, at, the in, at the endocrine problems, it's a common disorder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's something that we're going to touch on in a bit is the possibility of overdiagnosis as well as underdiagnosis. So do stay 